Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading Webinar. If you're here to learn about trading futures markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutamente in the correct place. Eh? Tonight's topic is finding critical uh, support and resistance levels and then of course how to trade them. First we've got to knock out our standard disclaimer so we can get over to uh, the charts and start looking at trade setups and uh, what have you. So let's get that out of the way. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar. Other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, with that out of the way, I see some late birds coming in. Don't worry about it. We are just literally getting started right now. You haven't missed anything. And for those of you who have, might have to leave early, don't sweat it. We'll get it up into the membership area tomorrow morning after the room closes with Gary. And then we'll get it up on the web, too, on the webinar links, which are located right here on this toolbar. Let's see if I can show that real quick. Yeah, so if you're visiting us this week or you're new or on a free trial, there's a little widget in the corner. It's the scrunched up toolbar. Go to the webinar page. And you'll see about, I don't know, 10, 12, 14, 16, something like that. Webinars that are all free and open to the public. You can watch it any time. And we'll post this one up there tomorrow morning. Okay? All right. Now let's get over to uh, some charts. As I mentioned, today's uh, topic is um, uh, finding and trading support and resistance levels. And so let's, let's get off to that topic straight away. Screen four. Here we go. All right. Uh, I just want to check something real quick. Does everybody see? Um, my cursor moving around, and do you see a YM four range chart? Cursor moving, YM four range chart. Just checking to switch over here to screen one. Cursor moving around in the middle of the chart. <coughs> NQ and RTY. What are you talking about? All right, wrong. What? Okay, testing video uh, video one more time. Cursor moving. YM chart. Um, okay, all right. Okay, good. I'm on the right screen. Now, for those of you that are on a free trial and visiting here, th this might look all completely new to you. Uh, let me get some more data on this chart here. I've got to get, uh, let's get, um, uh, I don't know, let's go back like 10 days, 14 days, get some more data on here. Well, that's loading. So uh, what we are, uh, are uh, we're Viper Trading Systems. We've been in business, most of you know, of course, about 10 years. Um, Gary and I started the business back in 2009. And uh, we've morphed over time into what we are now. We are running on the NinjaTrader 7 platform with indicators. We're connected to a data feed to our broker, which is uh, NinjaTrader, with a data feed from our provider. Okay, let's see here. You should see a YM4 range chart. There we go. Okay, good. All right. So, so when a market is in a downtrend, you will see a solid red background predominantly red bars and um, the mid band and all the bands here around the price are stair stepping down when a market is going in an uptrend um, I'm just going to quickly cover what you're looking at and discuss a little bit about trade entries and then we're going to quickly move into uh, spotting support and resistance and how we trade it which is the topic tonight so when you're in an uptrend like today here's today for instance we were pretty much in an uptrend most of the day from the open. I'm here in California. So 6.30 Pacific time is the open of the equity markets right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and so, so the data feed comes in, and our indicators run against that data, and it produces these background colors. It colors the bars either blue, yellow, or red, like such. See the bars. Um, and uh, we have the power meters, which are the four trends on the chart. We have uh, alerts. When you're in an uptrend, we toggle on long alerts. 
when you're in a downtrend, we toggle on short alerts. And when the various trade types are present on the chart, the bars will flash. This is an incredibly useful, uh, uh, a fairly new indicator we came out with a few months ago. I don't know, maybe it's six months now or longer, but a lot of people love this thing because it flashes all these trades, whether you're an uptrend, uh, uptrend or a downtrend. And then, of course, the predictors. The predictors help um, in real time. They paint support and resistance. And uh, the thing, of course, it helps, like today, for instance, as you can see that with the uptrend, the uh, ovals or the swing levels were all kind of moving up like such. See that? Okay. So uh, Gary, I think, leaves them on in a room. You know, I, I sort of, uh, truth be told, I kind of toggle them on and off a little bit, uh, depending on what I'm trading and what I want to see. And so uh, if there aren't any questions on the uh, indicators, let me discuss uh, very quickly uh, what the trade setups are. So let's use some examples here, and I'll just cover this. Uh, I'll just take literally a few minutes and cover the trade setups, and then we'll get into... Uh, support resistance okay all right so here right after the open I just want to show that uh, markets usually oscillate between three primary different conditions we have most of you know of course if you've been trading for any period of time we have what's called sideways or consolidation or range bound conditions here's a good example of that going into the open on ES right here here's a good example of it right here very range bound at the open, 630. It's kind of oscillating around the mid band here. And then you have, um, well, this technically sideways to up because, excuse me, the consolidation occurred within the context of an upward trend. So you had already had a thrust. Let me just quickly explain that because some of you on a free trial might not even know what I'm really kind of talking about here. But we have this idea of uh, what's the, called a thrust or a push, which creates the trend direction. In this case, it was up in the pre-market session, right? And then we have what are called retracements or pullbacks, where the market comes back into a support level and bounces. And a lot of the trades that we like to ta uh, take uh, in the live room and, and ourselves on our live accounts are um, located at or on or around the mid-band. So you have this notion of, um, and this provides good framework for us to see and take trades. Uh, the thick line in the middle here is called the mid band. We have one, two, three, four bands above it, one, two, three, four bands below it. And so there's a total of eight bands. The thin red line on top of the band number two, of course, is called line two. And the thin green line on top of uh, band six is called line six. So, for instance, here's an example of a thrust. Here's an example in the pre-market from this morning of a retracement into the mid-band area. And this is a good, solid, long mid-band bounce trade. So even though um, the market was sideways in here, let me do a pop quiz and make sure everybody's awake real quick. Okay, I want to ask you a quick question. In this box that I have at the open on YM today, Given the condition that you you see on the chart at the open, would your primary mode of entry be to take L long trades in the box, S short trades, so you're shorting the top of the box as your primary mode of trade entry, or B, would you trade both? So L, and I'll give you five seconds to respond, five seconds. L long, you're buying support and getting long at the bottom of the box. S, you're shorting the top of the box as your primary mode of trade entry. Or based on the box that you see right here at the open, would you trade both sides? B would be your uh, entry for the answer to the question. And there are three seconds left. What is your vote? Cast your vote. L, long, S, short. B, you're trading both sides of the box. Now, I know some of you are just literally looking at this for the first time, or maybe you were in the live room this morning and some of the terminology is a little confusing. I understand that. Don't, don't feel like you have to learn this in the next 20, 30 minutes because you don't. You know, it takes some people, you know, days or weeks or even a few months to learn all this. So don't be intimidated by what you're looking at. We're here to, this is all to teach. It's all to teach, right? 
All right, one more second. What are you going to do? Long, short, or both? Based on the mar uh, the market and the background condition. All right, time's up. All right, so let's analyze this for a second. In fact, let's start to use our topic to uh, to uh, to jump in here. Let's talk about support and resistance. Now, before I can show that on the chart and and, and offer you an answer to this question. I have to introduce what's called the concept of support and resistance because a lot of people want to, um, um, how you say, have one point that they feel is support and one point that they feel is resistance. Let me show you an example. So some of you, uh, some traders, uh, let me make this yellow. I've got to have this bold so everybody can see it. Stand by. Fix this, fix this uh, thing here. I want it to be yellow. So it stands out and make it much more bold. So there you go. I want yellow and I want it like three or four pixels. Let's try that. Yeah, see, that's good. Yeah, let's set that as default. That's thick enough, huh? You know what? You want four, let's see what four pixels look like. Yeah, that's pretty beefy. I'll take it down a notch. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, support and resistance are defined as areas where a market has come up to or pulled back to to find support or resistance and there's an old adage most you've heard it I'm sure over the years that traditionally support can and will uh, turn into resistance right and support and resistance will turn into support so think of it this way Here's a good analogy I've used over the years. Okay, here's here's one way to think about it. Think about a set of stairs going from, you know, the first level of a building or your house, or even you know maybe a better analogy would be this instead of the stairs. Let's suppose, you know, let's do this a different way. Let's suppose you have a multi-story building, whether it's your house or a building, office building or whatever. This is sort of a good concept that I think uh, will help all of you grasp what we're talking about here. And I'll just do a couple, three levels so you get the idea. Oops. Let's do one more here. Put another one up here like this. All right. And let's label them real quick. So this first one will be one. First level, ground level, of course. And then second level will be level two. And then, and then of course, the third for the purpose of this illustration, will be the third and final level. Oops. Here. So here's the floor of the first story of the building. When you go up the stairs or an elevator or something to the second floor, at the time you were on the first floor, the, uh, the um, second floor could be thought of as resistance. In other words, you're not going to get through this level until you go through, you know, up an elevator or up a pair of stairs to get through it. So in that sense, when you were on the, uh, the floor of the first floor, the second level of the building is resistance. Now, when you punch through the second floor, say like such, and then you pull back to it, the theory would be, in, 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 in the context of a building, of course, now the floor of level two becomes support because it is the floor, and then what now becomes resistance in our little analogy here? The floor of level three is now resistance, right? You hit your head there until you can get through it. Does that make sense? And you uh, take a, 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 a you know an elevator or stairs or whatever you get through three and now you can continue on up of course then four if I drew it four the the floor of support of four would now become resistance and then on any kind of pullback or where you're standing of course on level three now level three is support so it's a very similar condition that you have in trading now. A lot of people, like I said, want to have a point. Let's say that on this case here, you draw a line at 25 or 28,528. 528, you might say prior to here, 
was providing resistance. Yes, you can see that it hits its head, comes down, comes up, hits its head, hits its head. And then what does it do here? Right here. Of course, it goes from being resistance to now it is going to become support. You punch through it. You took the stair. You took the elevator, and you're through that resistance level now. You're up to the next level, yes? But I want to be clear about something here, and this is where I think a lot of traders run into um, sort of a challenge in this area is that, is that support and resistance, depending on the instrument you're trading, <coughs> can be well defined, excuse me, or very not very well defined. So let's and what do I mean by that? So it's it's the preponderance of location of candles. So here, for instance, we go through it a little bit, right? Here we wick it a little bit. Here we punch through it. Here we pull back. And now the mid band has come right to it, and we just kiss it a little bit right there with the wick of that candle right there. Here we come through it a little bit again, now providing support, yes. And here we sit right on it in this example right here. So you can make the case that in no condition of those one, two, three, four, five ovals was it a perfect touch except for maybe the wick at the second circle here where it wicked it like this and, and maybe a little bit of this one right here are kind of perfect touches of it. So there, what I'm trying to say is support and resistance is not a, a, um, a perfect thing. You, you just try to find somewhere where, where swing levels kind of line up a little bit. And if you've been in the room at all, you know, with Gary, he's, he's pretty much a master at doing this every day, right? He finds these swing areas, and he puts a line right on the chart. And normally that becomes either a trade entry point, a trade exit point, or a place where it's going to bounce, or a place where it's going to hit its head and set up a trade. So think of it's, it's a healthy thing to think of support and resistance as an area. It's an area where the market will come to to either bounce or roll over. Okay, that's the healthiest way I can describe that for you. So you don't have to spend now you know that you know laborious minutes and hours and had 10 minutes straight oh my goodness where the heck am i gonna where's support on this thing where where's resistance how long did it take me to draw this line excuse me i got a hiccup hold on a second take a sip of tea here if you noticed it i did it like in five seconds i just immediately sort of eyeballed this and threw a line right here okay does everybody understand that conceptually anybody not on board with that or kind of confused because if you are i can take a few more minutes and explain it otherwise i'm going to move on to the next <coughs> concept excuse me of uh, resistance okay i don't see anything good all right now based on what you see here above this line at 28 where might you draw another line <clears throat> on this chart here, let me help you out. Let me give you some levels. Okay, here, let me just show levels for you. Okay, so here's 25, here's 30, here's 35, here's 40, here's 45, here's 50, 55, 60, etc., all the way up. Right? So, where above here, since it broke it, might we want to draw the location of another line above 28? Where might you put it on this chart if you're going to throw one up here right now? That's a little more difficult than the line I'm showing because there's lots of swings sort of all over the place above here. But where might you want to put it? Let me, um, let me put a line up and we'll start moving it around and maybe I'll give you a multiple choice. Okay. How about would you put it, it, would you put it around 40? No? Okay. All right. Would you put it at maybe 45? Does that look good? You see a preponderance of swings kind of associated with 45? Okay, let's take it up. Would you go 50? Would 50 be resistance in your opinion? By the way, I'm only going to give you five seconds on these questions and answers because I've got a lot of material to cover and a lot of instruments. So, so if you think you see a number, go ahead and type it in. So the three choices were put it at 40. 
45 or 50. That's your three choices. You got three seconds left. Type in a number, cast your vote. Where is now the resistance line on YM? Once again, there's only two seconds left. It's either going to be 40, 45, or 50. One second. Cast your vote. Time's up. I like 50. You know, technically it'd probably be 48 or 49. And actually, truth be told, I think 45 is pretty good too. I think 40 is a little bit too low, mainly because you see all these candles coming through it here. So really, 40 is a little bit too low. I'd say if you said 45 is pretty good, anywhere between, say, 45 and 50, which is the top area right up here, that it poked through a little bit here, and it hit it here, and then it tried to find support in here. So yeah, anywhere kind of in between 45 and 50 is a good number. So now what we have is we have defined a 20 tick range where we now have support and we now have resistance. And so how do we trade it? Now that you know where support and resistance is, and I would submit to you, and now some of you, might, some of you skeptics might be saying, well, Charles, come on, you're your armchair quarterback. You're looking at this stuff after the fact, and you don't know, and how do you see, and in real time, how do you know, how do you trade it, blah, 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 blah. I've heard that a thousand times over the years. Well, in all due respect, if you come back over here, I think everybody would agree that the resistance and support level over here was known back over here, way back over here. So that line was drawn already, right? So we knew we knew that that line was there, right? And as soon as this market popped up and hit its head here, we knew this level. Right around midnight Pacific, going right into the tail end of the Asian trading session, into the morning of the European trading session. That swing was established. And technically, you actually could have put a line somewhere around there. Would you agree? So the point I'm trying to make is, is that going into the open at six, well, five o'clock is here in the pre-market a.m. Pacific time, and 6.30 is right here, the open, these levels were already known. And so what I'm proposing to you is this, and you can start as early as tomorrow morning or tonight or whenever you trade. You know, you night owls, if you trade the Asian session, you get up early and you trade the European session. We have a lot of traders that do that in Europe and Asia that use our system. They trade the currency futures, all manner of things over there. And they use exactly what we're showing you here. You want to go ahead and define, find those swing levels. Find the swing levels, put your lines on your chart, and use them to trade. Because, in effect, what happened here, when you knew this line ahead of time, and you knew this line before midnight, and you had those lines on your chart, could you have not have bought this market here, if you were up early, right? If you could have bought it here. And you could have bought it here because everybody in here said five minutes ago that inside of this range, you were getting long as your primary mode of entry. You were not shorting this. This was a no-no. You were not shorting it and you were not trading both sides. You don't trade against the trend. The trend was up. So you weren't shorting the top. What were you doing at the top? You weren't shorting it. What were you doing? If you're getting long down here at this known support level, what were you doing when you got up here? What were you doing when the market hit its head right here? You longies. You long bu bu uh, bounce buyers. You bounce buyers. What are you doing up here? In fact, let me take the short off so it's not, not too confusing. What do you do? Five seconds. So I'm just so I'm clear. You're buying this bounce. Okay, you're buying this bounce. You're buying that bounce. You're buying this bounce. And you're buying this bounce. And the market comes all the way up to here. If you're trading, if you're trading a two lot, what do you do with the first contract right here? What do you do with that first contract? What are you doing up here when you're getting long at resistance off support? What are you doing right there? Three seconds. What are you doing? Scalping out your first contract of profit. Now, do you think that trading this market or any market that having these lines on the chart would be important? What do you think? I mean, it really is, it, it, you know, it, it goes beyond just understanding support and resistance. It's actually defining where the trades are. 
It's defining where you're entering, entering the trade. It's defining where you're taking your scalp off. These are incredibly invaluable, and everybody in here should be doing it on your own charts. It, you, you, I mean, it's helpful to come in and watch Gary draw the lines, and you can use those certainly to trade. And if you can, you know, it's a good thing to do to start to try to mimic his lines so you start to get it. But once you get it, in the pre-market session, when you fire your charts up and you're trading YM, you should obviously come in here and put a line right here and put a line somewhere right around here. And known that you were in out an uptrend and you're buying these support levels ahead of anybody in the room even calling it out. By the way, most of you know, of course, that's why we have all this training. That's why I have all these training sessions every week is because we want you to be empowered to do what I'm showing here right on your own chart. So it's right in front of you. So you see it ahead of time or at the same time we're seeing it. And we say something like, let me give you like something that could uh, happen. It might have happened this morning. I can't remember. There's so many trades. Or tomorrow morning. If uh, YM comes down there anywhere in that 25 to 30 area, because that's a range, right? 27, 28, around the mid band, and it bounces at that support, I will look to get long down there. I'm looking to buy support. The trend is sideways to up. I'm buying support, and we're getting long. Scalpy coin, take some scalpy coin, fade the... Uh, fade the uh, 45, 50 area by three ticks to take your scalp off. So when we say that in the room, that's what we're describing. We are seeing those entries. We're helping you see the entries. And then what will happen is after you start seeing lots of entries like this, you'll see on your own chart. Yeah, I see what he's talking about. There's support down there at 27, 28. I see why he's getting long. And you know what? There is. He's right. There's a swing in the pre-market right up here, just under 50. And I'm going to want to take my scalp off up there. Okay, good. I don't see any more questions on this. Let's move on. I want to get to, um, let's type in some uh, instruments that you want to see tonight. Cast your vote. How many of you are crude traders? ES traders? I'm going to switch the chart to, uh, to, to other instruments. So we're going to start looking at other instruments for support and resistance levels. So you can see them on there. So type in what you like to trade and what chart you want to see. CL, ES, NQ. RTY, gold, GC. Who, what kind of traders we got in here? What futures, what's, uh, what instruments do you track? What do you trade? Okay, got a lot of CLs, quite a few ESs, a couple of golds. All right, let's flip to, uh, let's go to crude next. I'll tell you what, we'll stay with the equities. Let's pop ES up real quick here, and then we will get to, um, uh, we'll get to crude, and then we'll, we'll uh, hopefully we'll have enough time to get to, uh, yeah, so we'll work our way around. We'll do yes, we'll do crude, and then we'll do gold. All right, here we go. Now, I'm good, now that we're all experts on support and resistance, I'm kidding, of course, um, let's try to do some exercises together. I'm going to throw a couple of different scenarios at you. I'm going to throw a couple of different scenarios at you and see how you deal with this, okay? All right, let's do, I'm going to do some couple easy ones, and then I'm going to do some hard ones, okay? Are you ready? Here we go. These are a little bit more complicated. No, no, I haven't shifted it, uh, Jerry. Give me a second. I'm, ES is right here. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds on this chart. Now, <clears throat> in this exercise, you would need to call out what levels you see support and resistance at. So let me give you my cursor to give you levels in case you're having issues seeing that on the right. So, for instance, this level down here is 93, 94, 95, 96, <clears throat> excuse me, 97, 97, 98. Now you're going to type in a, a number for support. And then you'll type in, you can do it in the same, you know, just do like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, this is not the right answer, but let's say it was 89 and, you know, 91. You would type in 89 space, 91, support and resistance, okay? Working our way up, here's 99. 200 even. 201. 02. 03. 
All right. So the first number of your response in casting support and resistance answer to the question, you have to type in the first number, which is support. So obviously you can see, I'm going to start, I'm just showing you numbers here. You pick your spots. Everybody see yes? Is this thing on? Everybody understand the exercise? Anybody, you got that figure out? I'm trying to help you out a little bit here. I'm going to show some levels. Let's start down here. Support and resistance, 93, 94, 95. Of course, here's 96, 97, looking for support and resistance. Where would you put the lines? Tomorrow morning, you ES traders, you wake up, and the chart looks like this. Where are your lines going to go? There's 98, there's 99. First number of your response is the support level. Second is the resistance level. Here's uh, not, not even, 01, 02. And of course, you can see there's O3. So, so that is the uh, that's all I'm going to show on that. You have four seconds to type in your answers. <clears throat> First number is support, where you would put the line to signify support. And the second number that you put in would be where you consider resistance to be. Now, remember what we said. We said it's an area, right? I know this is what this this is why we're doing this exercise. A lot of traders come back. I get this all the time. Well, Charles, you know there was the market went above that and then it went below it and it didn't hit it and then it broke it. And what are you talking about? How do you where you just arbitrarily pick to put these lines somewhere? I'll show you in a second. I'll give you a couple extra seconds to get your answer in. Answers support and resistance. First number is your support line. Second is your resistance, and I show the numbers. You clearly see them in bold to the right, over here. Right over here. See them? Okay. All right. Okay, one second left. Get your numbers in. It's important exercises. you gotta, you got to know this stuff. It's going to help you trade a lot. One more second. All right, time's up. Now, here's how – let me let me um, help you by sharing with you um, the process that I use to help um, define where I consider to uh, support and resistance want to be. And it goes like this. I look to the left, and I start with the first swing I see. When I'm defining support, that would be one right here. It would be a couple of them down here. It would be one right here. And it would be one right here. And then I'll just sort of cluster these together so I don't have to keep doing this one by one by one. You're going to get the idea. Sort of a collection of that. Now, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to put a line on here if you're struggling to see this, and I hope this is going to help you out. Would you put the line, I'm going to give you some choices. I'm going to give you an A, a B, and a C. Let's start with A. Would you say that, that the line for support should be located at position A, here? Would you say that support would be positioned at level B here? Or would you say that the support resistance level would be at position C located somewhere right in there? Once again, A, B, C. Where do you think where do you see the preponderance of candles being located? C B or A? Type in your answer. And some of you by the way, I'm looking at support numbers coming in from many of your responses and they look very good by the way. I'm helping the the few of you that may not be able to really see this too well. I would I would suggest that the location with the most candle look swings is would be C. And what you could do, and I use kind of a distance thing. Can you see the distance between support here just under right around 96 
and then all the way down here at 9192 this is a full like 12 ticks away so on the support area you could say you would say something like this you would say that there's another level of support down around 92 but the primary support is located around 96 and so here again keeping with our notion of um, an area with a preponderance of candles it would look like that right it would look like that and so the if you just count and just visually see the ones that come into that area are one close to it two three four five six seven so if you said anywhere between 95 and 96 in this area right here I would say that was a good support call I would suggest to you that 92 is a different level down here oh, too far away to be relevant to these right here now the resistance area is a little more clean right so if we start with our notion of looking to the left and we start over here we can see that there was a swing established here one here a whole slew of them here and here and then a whole bunch kind of like right here similar to the bottom I'd say more or less like that all right now I'm going to do a similar exercise here I'm going to do a very similar exercise I'm going to give you two choices on this one okay I'll just do two, two choices okay a would be up here or would you go with B right here a here for resistance up close to or on o3 or would you feel that it's closer to the o2 level and that would be b so cast your vote we're looking for putting a resistance line on the chart a o3 ish area b more or less around o2 within a tick or two i'll give you two more seconds trying to peg the resistance at the top of this uh, trading range was stuck in for a long time one second okay time's up good the correct answer was B because here again we're getting to the notion of the preponderance of candles now if we put it all the way up at three how many swings hit O3 one how many of the swings hit the O2 area within a tick? Well, arguably one, two, three, that broke a little bit, four, close to it, five, six, seven. Here again, an area. Now let's talk about how you might trade something like this. What, for those of you that have been around a while, you know that this answer. For those of you that are new, you might not know this answer. What is the minimum size of a trading range where it, we feel that it that it is considered tradable. What is the minimum size of a range to be considered tradable in size? Five seconds. In ticks. So size in ticks. What would be the minimum size in ticks to be tradable? Four seconds. You can do a range or you can do a number. We, ha we do have a range, by the way. Most of you know that, of course. But if you have a number in mind, that's cool, too. Three seconds. Type in a number or range for the minimum size criteria of a tradable range. Two seconds. <clears throat> What's the number? Minimum criteria to trade a range. One second. What is it? If you're new and you don't know, that's cool. Don't worry. We'll, we'll explain it in a second to you. It's all good. All right, time's up. 20 to 25 ticks. 20 to 25 ticks. So let's do a um, quick assessment on this range, and let's see if it, if it meets the criteria. So we're saying that support was around 96-ish, just to have a number to work with, right? And we say that resistance is 02. So how many points, how many points is it from 96 to 02? Let's see, 96, 4 plus 2 is 6. And then how many ticks are in a point for a yes? How many ticks are in a point? So it'd be six times what? 
So it's a two-part question. How many ticks constitutes this range? Right? How many ticks constitute the range? And then once you know that, then the question is, is it tradable? Right? Is it tradable? So you should know the answer from, from that. Yeah, there's four ticks per point, six points, so you've got 24 ticks, plus or minus a couple of ticks here and there. So the answer is yes. Yeah, this is a tradable range on ES. Now let's keep with um, our theme of what we did on the last chart on YM, and we said that we asked you, is your primary mode of entry to short the top or get long from the bottle, bottom? Or both. Five seconds. Might seem a little redundant we keep talking about all this stuff, but you know what? It's a lot of I, I've noticed and I've learned over the years that it takes sometimes as many as six or seven or more touch points for someone to understand the subject material. So that's why we do that's why there's a lot of repetition. That's why we repeat ourselves. So your primary uh, entry on this trading this range is long, B, buy from here. 24 ticks, it is tradable, so we know the answer is yes. S for short, or B for both. You're getting long here, and then you're shorting it, and then you're getting cover by the cover, and you get long, and you then short it, because you take profit, and then you short it, and you buy the cover, and then that's both. Or, when it bounces, you're buying long. That would be the B answer. So you're just buying. When it gets up to the top, we'll show you how to take profit. We'll explain that in a minute. So just every time it comes down and hits that support, you buy it. That would be the B answer, right? There's the B answer, buy only. Oh, wait a minute, B and both. That's not good. L, I'm sorry. <laughs> I messed that up. L is for long at the bottom. S is for short at the top. B is for both. My apologies, my apologies. So L down here. Sorry about that trading this range. Yeah, let's be clear. So we're going to put an L at the bottom where you're getting long. Oops. What happened there? So you would cast the vote of L. A vote of S would be that you're just shorting the top. Every time it comes up there, you're selling it, right? And you're covering it at the bottom. That would be the S, short, you shorties. And the answer B would be both, meaning that you you buy and then you sell. And then you buy, and then you sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, all the way around, 24 ticks. All right. I would uh, – well, we'll, we'll get I – mean, people are coming in here. So two more seconds. How are you going to trade this range? You see this range tomorrow morning. What are you going to do? You got to know. You fire up your chart and you look at it. What are you going to do? Time's up. I would suggest in this particular one, um, L would be L long buy, you know, buying down here would be the primary mode of entry. And so let me explain how you do that. So when you trade a range like this, simply because the you can notice here that the level is broken sometimes, it's not quite reached sometimes, sometimes it touches it, sometimes it can't quite get it. So we all know that you don't put your buy orders right on that level itself. You want it to come down close to it and bounce. Close to it and bounce. And so your actually actual level of buying would be more like right here. I'm gonna make that a different color. <clears throat> Anybody know what we call that? What do we call that when you when you don't go quite on where support resistance is? You come a little bit above it, and let's do the let's do where you take profits up here. So you don't put it right on O2, you'd go somewhere like about here for your profit taking at resistance, right? So you're fading. That's right. That's exactly right. That's what that's called. So this is your buy line, and that's your profit line. So a lot of times, depending on the instrument and how clean and clear the support resistance levels are, you could have as much as four, five, or six ticks off of the top or off of the bottom to get in and out. So you're, just to be clear, your resistance is here. We drew the line. We did our analysis, the prognosis candle, the whole thing, and everything, and we come inside that by four, five, six ticks, and we find we're a level that's solid that hits almost all the time, and that would be close to 0.1 or maybe a tick under it. 
This is where you take profits. Your profit target is here. Now, at the bottom where you're buying, you don't go right here at 95 and 96. You've got to come up all the way into here around 96.50 to get filled long. So the long trades look like this. Here's long number one. Here's long number two. Here's long number three. Right here. Uh, didn't hit it with that one. Then this one would have been very close, depending on exactly where you had the buy order. But this would be long number um, one, two, three, four. And then, of course, you can see, I don't know that the wick caught that. I'm not going to count that one. But very definitely, this would have been long number one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. So, so the reason you can see very clearly by our analysis here, the whole reason that we have this notion of 20 to 24 ticks is because with the with the fading involved of five or four five six ticks on each end you can see that half the trade is gone just getting in and out right 10 of the 20 to 24 ticks is gone by the fading see it so you have part of it's gone there and part of it's gone there by the time you fade it and a little bit slip you could trade both sides of this but i i would argue the case that it's sideways to up since you were coming off of an uptrend to the left, and so when you come off of um uh, uh of a uh, of an uptrending market, you tend to want to do the buy only. Although you could make the case that there's some legitimate shorts here because the mainly because the range is so well defined. Okay, if you have a range that's not clean like this, I wouldn't think about taking the shorts. Definitely not. So in in the end, what you're left with. Is, is a trade that goes essentially basically from about 96.50 to up here around not not 50, maybe even 01. And so that is four. What is that? Uh, 96 to not not 50 is four times um, four is 16. So you had five 16 tick trades here. How much is that worth, by the way? How much is that worth? What would that be worth? Five 16 tick trades on ES. Well, how much is four ticks, right? How much is four ticks? Four ticks is $50, right? 50, four ticks, one point. We got four of those. We got four points. So each trade on one contract is $200, right? So if you took five of them, you made about 10 bones, right? 16 ticks, two bones. 16 ticks, two bones. 16 ticks, two bones. Five of those is a thousand bucks. So now looking at this, for those naysayers out there, and every time I ask this question, I get the same answer. Do you like to trade ranges, yes or no? And overwhelmingly, everybody says no. But I'm telling you that as you get more experience in trading markets, particularly ES, which can be range bound for days at a time, if you can work that range bound trading into your repertoire, it can add a lot of money to your bottom line. It really can. Yeah. All right. Now, let's look at what happens when a market comes out of a range like this. And then I want to go get crude. In fact, I think I'm out of time. But I don't have time to do that. Let's go get crude. Stand by. I'm running out of time here. Hold on. I wanted to get crude, and I want to squeak in a gold chart. I'm going to want to run out of time and not show the whole gamut of charts you wanted to see. Yeah, no, I, I don't really, I don't classify it that way, Kurt. Um, I I look more at, uh, at what the range is, okay? In that case, that's a range-bound situation. That's a range-bound condition, right? So I don't classify those trades. I don't call it, you, you, you would not trade, well, just to put it this way, you wouldn't, trade the mid band obviously because the mid band's right in the middle you know everybody knows that if the mid band's in the middle of that range you don't take mid band trades right all right let me go back here i want to start over here on crude i'm going to do a couple quick exercises i'm going to discuss the trading of crude and then i want to slip a little gold in before we wrap okay all right, where is support and resistance on this chart? 
10 seconds. I'll give you a couple levels. I'll get, spot you some levels. We're going to do a quick exercise here, and then we're going we're gonna to move on very quickly. Okay. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Support and resistance locations on the crude oil. Granted, it's range bound. 55 and finally 60. Support and resistance on crude. I'll do that one more. When I'm done with this exercise, when I get to 60, the time will be up. We're running out of time. Okay, so the first number was 10, 15 on your support side, 20, 25, 30, 35, mid band's a tick under there, 40, 45, 50. We're coming up to the last two, so get your numbers in. 55 for resistance, and the final number is 60. So there's two seconds now left. Where do you see support? Where would you put the support line at the bottom of the chart? And where would the resistance line go towards the upper part of the chart? One second left. That's how quick you have to train yourself to be able to spot this. And you can do it, right? It's, it's, you know what it is? It's, it's, it's FaceTime with the chart. The more time you put in with the chart, Particularly if you're, you're, you're whatever your chosen instrument is. If you like trading crude, you got to get a lot of crude chart time in there, right? Both live and replay. Okay, so I'm giving you a little extra time there, right? Get that chart time in. All right, time's up. I'll give you one more. Okay, I'll give you one more shot with two guesses, top and the bottom. Here we go. On crude for support. Would you pick A, B, or C? Once again, five seconds. A, B, or C? Two seconds. Type in a letter. That's all you got to do. Where would you put the line? I'm giving you a second shot at support. Time's up. C. That has the preponderance of candles located above and below the, that where it comes to the swings. Good. Most of you got that. Okay, good. Now we're going to do a quick exercise, an AB exercise on the resistance level, and it would look like this. A would be here. B would be here. Five seconds. A would be here. B would be here. Two seconds. A or B? A was up here, remember? Support and resistance. One second. Just type in a letter. It's that simple. A or B. We should be getting the hang of this by now. We've done a lot of charts together, right? Okay. The answer is the correct answer is B. All right. I'm going to do something that's not related to um, support and resistance. I am going to do a series of flashing crude charts at you reconstructing different parts of the past couple of trading days. And you're going to type in simply L for long, S for short. You're going to quickly try to identify what the trend is on the chart and how you would trade it. You don't have to call trade entries. You don't have to say where you're getting in or out. I'm going to flash you a chart, and you'll have five seconds to type in an L or an S. You ready? Okay, here comes chart number one for crude. On this one right here, give me a second. Hold on, stand by. Where the heck is that cursor? Oh, here we go. All right, here we go. Chart number one. Five seconds on the clock, L or S. L long, boop. Your primary mode of entry, short, S, boop. Four seconds. On this particular day on crew, were you getting long or short? Three seconds. What are you going to do? What are you doing here? What are you doing? One second. L or an S. Cast your vote. Time's up. Long. Longs only. Trend is up. Bonus points. Four second bonus point round. How many mid band long trades are on this chart? Three seconds. Just type in a number. How many mid-band long trades are on this chart? 
That's not a trick question, by the way. Two seconds. Just a number. Count them up. Boop, 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 boop. Whatever it is, type in that number. One second. Counting mid-band trades. Give me an extra 30 seconds. I see a lot of good numbers. And most of you are getting this. Most of you, you're seeing them, right? You're seeing them. All right, cool. Time's up. All right. So here was our thrust. Let's just quickly go through this, and I'm going to pop gold up. Um, we all see very clearly that the background turned green with this thrust right here. Okay. So the first mid band trade long was right here where it bounced. That's mid band trade number one right there. We thrust up, we hit the swing. You can see that resistance was established here, got the scalp off. Uh, now, depending on how you looked at this or how you traded it, this could have been considered since it did not break support. You could argue the case that this was one continuous mid band long trade, or you could make the case that it's two separate ones where you got a scalp off here to line six, and then that was the second one that had a runner. So we're on the border on that one. We'll come back to that one. And then, of course, you can see we come into the band above the mid-band right here. On this thrust retracement here, this is a legitimate long trade at the mid-band right there. Now, the outlier is this puppy right here. You could say, yes, that was a, a, a trade set up, but you never filled. So that's two different things. Was it a legitimate setup? The answer is yes. The bars sit on the mid-band. However, you were never filled. So I would give you one, two, three, four. But this one never filled. That doesn't count. That wasn't the question. Or you could have made the case for two here, and that would have been five. Excellent. Good job. Let's go to gold. Running short on time. Let's squeak a little goldie in here. I'll just do a couple of pop quizzes for you real quick, and then we'll wrap up. I know a lot of you got to get going. I got to get going, too. Stand by. Gold is loading. So does this help? You know, I hope this helps. I try to try to make, you know, I try to make these, you know, these things, uh, these uh, webinars, these training, you know, I try to do it in a way that you, you, when you look at charts from, you know, the next day or next week or whatever, you start to see, you know, helps you see what, you know, when it's unfolding in front of you and we're talking about it in the room. All right. I'm going to do a couple of pop quizzes on you here. I'm going to do a quick yes, no. And then I'll do one other setup on Goldie Gold. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Kumaresh. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, was um, um, uh, well, the fourth one wasn't filled in that last chart, uh, Alan, because if you'd boxed it in as I showed it there, um, it, the box was never broken to the upside. So the setup was there. In other words, the, it, it, it entered the band above the mid-band. So it, from a technical definition point of view, yes, it was a mid-band trade setup, which was the question. How many mid-band trade setups were there? However, if you box it like I showed it, it never filled. It never broke up. Yeah, so that's what that is. Yeah, we'll get this posted tomorrow morning. Okay, yes, no question. Here we go. Five seconds on the clock. In the area circled by my cursor here, are, are these short trades, yes or no? These red bars. Just type, just quickly look at it. You got four seconds left. Boop, and you got to instantly commit this to your memory. This stuff, when you start trading, just boom, come bam, right out of your head. Yes, no. It's a short or it isn't. Short trades here, yes or no? Circle by my cursor. Three seconds. Just a Y. Yep, I'm shorting it. Nope, N. Two seconds. Short trades on the red bars. Bars are red. Bars are red. That looks like a downtrend starting to me. One second. Short, yes or no? Time's almost up. Cast your vote. Red bars. Better be getting short. Going to miss a big run down. What do you think? Time's up. No. So most of you know, of course, the terminology we use for making trade decisions is we have minimum criteria. We have mid-band. And we have deep retracements. In the case of these, we all can see that, of course, in this particular uh, day, this is the 24th. This is Christmas Eve. This is going into midnight here. Here's midnight right here for the start of the European session, coming off the Asian session right here. Trend was up. When you come down in an uptrend to the outermost band, it's called a deep retracement or a phantom. 
deep retracement or a phantom, this is not a trend change. Now, if this last swing down here had come up, kissed and rolled and went down like that, and then started to stair step down, yeah, you'd have legitimate shorts. But these are all long trade entries. All these retracements, all these retracements, all these retracements, all long only, long only. Final question of the night from this morning on gold. I'll make it a fairly easy one because everybody's done a great, great job. Totally nailing all these things. Everybody gets a gold star, plus, plus, minus, plus. I'll give you 10 seconds to identify support and resistance on gold right now. I'll help you out. Call out gold support was the first number you type in, and the second number would be resistance. Okay, 1150 is here. I'm going to do it by increments of one point. 1250 is here. 1350 is located here. 14 is located here. 1450 here. 15's here. 1550. 16. 1650, 17 here, just above 17. Type in support and resistance levels. Two more seconds. I'm going to go quickly ratchet up. Do it full points. 11, 13, 15, 16, 17. Two more seconds. Get it, get it, squeak in a couple numbers if you can. Get one second. I know you guys, everybody's kind of tired and wanting to get out of here. I don't blame you. We're almost done. Time's up. Oh, numbers are coming in. I'll give you. Let me give you another couple seconds. Time numbers are just coming in here. Okay, cool. You see them over here, right? I'm not going to call them out again. You see the levels. Pick your spots. Where is support and resistance on gold right now? See the bar is moving around. This is live data. That's where gold gold's trading right here, right now. 15, 15, 20. Yeah, right there. Okay, good. Let me help you out while you're looking at this. So this is kind of mirroring my questions from earlier. A, B, or C. Current gold support and resistance. Once again, A here, current support, current support. Right? I didn't say previous support. I didn't that wasn't the question, right? The question was current support. So that was once again A, B would be located here, around 13, and then C would be right around 14 for support. I'll give you three more seconds. You call out the level that you want this line to go at, A, B, or C. Two seconds. Type in your letter. Cast your vote. Give you a couple extra seconds here. So that was A. This was B. Current support, C. Time's up. C. Now, you can make the case that, you know, you 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 know you you know I when I start to look at preponderance of candles, the most recent candles I see I see swings that look something like this I, I start to look for that I see a little bit of this where it kind of held it and then pushed up right and you came down right here and you kind of bipped down and you held this little level right here excuse me kind of right in there and then in here you went just a little bit below it right just a little bit below it. So I'd say if we're thinking about an area of support right around 14, 14, 20, kind of kind of in between in between 14 and 15 would be a good answer. Like that. Actually, more like that. Can you see there's a preponderance of candles kind of swinging around in that area? That's literally how simple that can be. Now, as far as the top goes, um, it, it's kind of loose. You almost want to split the difference between A and B a little bit and kind of put it right here. That was a little bit of a trick question. You want to kind of make sure that you engulf this area right here because if you go way up here, and remember we said recent, not previous. If you said previous, it would be up here. Right. That's That was over here and that was over here. 
that was like eight seven o'clock this morning because way way back then we're at six o'clock in the evening so that it, it really should go right in here you can see we have a preponderance of candles that hit resistance back in the morning right here and then we have a swing that came up here at around before uh before the close on gold right here and clearly you can see it hit its head uh right the uh right at the close right in here yeah good all right so if you said anywhere around 14 1450 and 161650 that was correct final 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 and we are wrapping up and i'm shutting this puppy down five seconds on the clock cast your vote long or short i'm not going to give you both as an option are you buying support in this range l or are you shorting the top of it s five seconds on the clock final question trading gold right now in the range based on what you see are you taking l longs only s shorts only i'm not giving you the both op option in this particular uh, question three seconds l or s Boop. we spent an over an hour talking about this you should know this by now right Two seconds, L or S. That's the only choices you have. You're either short in the top or you're buying the bottom. I'll, get, I'll help you out a little bit. Look at the background color, right? Coming off of uh, your sideways to what? To answer the question. Sideways to what? We'll answer your question. One second. Time's almost up. Cast your vote. Trend is up. Right. And the correct answer is L. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, you are correct. These are long trades. Right here. And one just happened before we opened the webinar back here. That was a long entry off of support. You are correct. All right, good. There you have it. The trend was sideways to up, so you're buying support. You're not shorting the top. What are we doing when we get to the top? We take scalp profits scalp profits on the longs and we fade the top by four five six depending on how clean it is up there right louis says i've been trading gold and i've scalped it in this area good for you louis all right cool any more questions more questions on what we showed today any final i'm going to wrap wrap final final i'm going to hit the stop recording button thank you for sticking around sorry i went a little bit over today i got tied up on some uh, so that, that range explanation took longer than expected 